Good afternoon everyone, welcome back to Piccadilly. You can see in front of you the hard standing which I did in the last video and the painting of it. Now I'm going to start turning my attention to the carriage shed. Now if you remember I said I was going to use this image from Scale Scenes and if I just remind you by just clicking on some of the images this is what it's going to be like. And this particular one shows inspection pits, which won't be going in. I won't be digging out all that up. All right. I will put the yellow lines in um, just by using the vinyl, the vinyls that I've got. Just cut off a, well, probably about a millimetre strip and stick that on all the way up both sides of the track. So I can do that. But that will probably be as much towards the inspection pits as it's going to go. Now, as regards to the actual printing off, I've done that. So there's the actual images themselves. And there's an outline of the end of the shed. OK, so if I place that on the tracks, you will see that is nowhere close to being the right width. So it's probably give or take just over a centimetre on both sides to go. So that is considerably smaller than it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the the PDF images from, um, from the download and then I'm going to put them into Infinity Designer and scale them up to the correct size so that the whole building will then bridge this gap. All right. OK, I'm not going to show you this because it would be really difficult to set up the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So you will just have to take my word for this, unfortunately. Now, what's going to happen on the actual layout is the shed, as I've said, is going to span this gap. So it'll come from one side to the other side here. Excuse my hand. And then when it's appropriate, we'll lift up like that so there'll be hinges down this side of the board now the other thing i want to mention is the obviously this is manchester and if i just pan you across obviously manchester piccadilly now there is a massive depot outside of manchester um, called Longsite, which um, would be good if this could be that all right but obviously this is about three, four, even five times smaller than the real thing. So what I'm going to do is make a nod to long sight. So I'm not going to call it long sight um, because I don't think I've got sufficient of it to warrant it because the real long sight has got three carriage sheds side by side. I believe there is another shed, a loco shed over there. And I believe there is a loco shed over this side. That's what I remember from looking at Google Maps. Somebody did mention it. And and yes, it is a good idea to do that. Uh, but I think it would look a little bit silly if I call it long sight. So I'm going to call it long. And then there's obviously the sight bit is to do with vision. So I possibly might call it long view or something like that. If you've got any other ideas about what you think I should call it along similar lines to long sight, then, you know, do say. I just feel that it's not appropriate to call it long sight because people will look at it and think that doesn't look anything like long sight. And I would have to agree, and particularly with this exact shed. So I'm going to go downstairs now and start reconstructing this shed. Um, please forgive me for not showing you the exact process, but I will come back to you once I've got some basic mock-ups. Right, this is where I am so far. If I take you down in front. Now, I know this is just A4 paper and it's, it's very thin so you can see through it. But I'm hoping you can see that the actual width of the building is going to be a lot wider. But what I might do, if I show you the actual picture of the, the shed as advertised I don't have to build it exactly to the way the kid is saying I can make my own pieces to go up the side here 
and the middle and again at that side which I think would probably be easier and then I can make those side bits this bit a bit wider the centre bit a tad wider and so on and I can reduce the width of those doors probably by about 10%. The next section is then to start cutting the uh, side pieces because what it recommends in the instructions is that you make all the external pieces first and glue those together and take it from there. So what I think I might do, if I can get away with it, I'll try two pieces, but the grey board I've got is only um, 600 millimetres wide or long which would take me to a shed of 1200 but this is 1425 millimetres so it could be I might just have to split it equally into three or I have two longer pieces with a middle section all by itself. Right this is a mock-up and it's very rough and ready at the moment as well. You can see it's all quite lumpy, bumpy sort of area. But I have mounted it to a piece of card just to give me an idea of sizes. But the problem I'm trying to work out is the gaps between the doors, or more specifically, the width of this. Because as you can see, I've got a Pendolino coach there. That, they are my longest coaches. Now, as that comes through, it doesn't catch now. It did, but if you look at the gap, it's not much. But there is a gap. However small that gap is, there is a gap and it doesn't catch. So that's got to be good. Now, if I take it round to the other side, which is the point, it's fine. Now that's the gap, that side. So you probably could argue I could just take that across just a tad more, yeah? So getting that absolutely right is crucial. Right now, so I'm just gonna mark the end of that there, take that through and just mark just there, oops, and there. So those two little marks will help me get it in the right place. But you can certainly get a flavour of what that's going to look like, even from just those two pieces, those three pieces even. Right, I managed to do some significant progress. As you can see there, this is the start of the actual thing. And to make these windows, I've had to make a jig, which is um, based on the the print off that I've done so I've had to make that bigger and taller to accommodate the right shape this piece just happens to have a bit of um, graffiti on it there are other options many plain walls and there's obviously a door um, you'll probably know probably say to me John it doesn't it's not the right height yes I know um, it is a kit bash but at the same time it's partly scratch built as well so I'm just taking it one step at a time, working it out as I go along. Um, I will try and incorporate as much of the kit as I can, um, but obviously the main construction I've got to get it so it fits the layout, not the other way around. Um, but anyway, at the bottom here, I've printed off a sheet of um, dark blue engineering bricks. So I shall mount that all the way along. Um, so hopefully with a bit of uh, salting on there, that could look quite good and dirt and all the rest of it. Um, between these sections here, so there, even there, and between each of the sections, there's going to be, um, I'm not sure quite what you call it, but like a flat pillar against the, the wall. So my next job is obviously to get these windows cut out. Um, there's not going to be so many cut out on the back section. I'm thinking of having just that one and then leave, say, three or four, and then just have the odd window here and there. All right, done a bit more now. So as you can see, I've now cut out all of the windows on both sides and placed the side brickwork. I've done that on the other side as well. So if you just bear with me and I'll take you around and so you can see that too. 
and it's a bit difficult to get the camera in but hopefully you can see pretty much what's happened there yeah it is all a bit close and i apologize for that but it isn't uh, very far from the wall as you can appreciate now starting to think about the windows um because the kit suggests that you put the windows in next because the wall is going to have a double skin. None of this is glued, by the way. It's literally all just placed together. So what I've done is printed off the windows after scaling them. And you print them off onto a special inkjet acetate. And it's rough one side and smooth the other side. And it prints on the rough side. So you have to put it in in such a way that the print heads will contact this side. So, and the other thing as well, I don't know whether you can see that, but it is very, very thin and floppy. So if I put that in um, and touch the windows, they'd just fall straight out and I'd be constantly forever putting them back in. So what I've decided to do for two reasons, um, one to protect the print, and two, to give me a bit more gluing surface, is to mount them onto a larger car, a larger piece of um, acetate. And that is much thicker as well. Um, don't ask me how many microns it is. I really don't know. Um, so, but I've put it so that the rough side is in the middle and it's the two smooth sides so that the print is protected. So that will be then stuck on the inside just there like that oops everything's falling apart well you get the idea now as you can appreciate i'm not really happy we're just sticking that in as as it is at the minute because it's all very very flat and this would have been built in i'm guessing the 1960s 1970s looking at the architecture and even then, there would be window frames on there. So what I'm going to do is my old trick with these sticky labels. And that is to cut very thin slithers of sticky label and stick it on both sides. Um, when the windows go in, I will be putting in window frames around the outside. So I should be using the one mil plastic card for that. Right, so I'd show you what I was doing with the windows. So as you can see, I've done a couple of bars on there. And I've deliberately done them tatty, so that the it's I've I've painted or done them grey. So standard labels, which that's not black. I've just used a grey colour. All right, these. I mean, these just happen to be Spectrum Aquas, but any marker pens will do the job. It doesn't really make any difference. Now, what I do is I'm cutting off the side here. So I'm going to eye up a millimetre. I'll try and do it in line with the camera so you can see exactly what I'm saying, but I'm taking off the slightest thin slither and then with the scalpel, not pressing too hard because I don't want to go all the way through the backing. And then lift that off. So you can see how thin that is there, can't you? And I've just placed the window on a piece of something white. So I purely so I can see the marks that the print has made and then just rub it down with the scalpel like that. Cut off the bit for the other side, flip it over. All right. right, I've gone ahead and put in one set of windows. So the, obviously the others are not in yet. Um, so I thought I'll take the opportunity to show you how I'm gonna go about doing it. I've also put in, um, if you notice on this one, um, a window frame and also a window sill, which I'll show you on this window. All right, so first of all is to take the double-sided tape now, this is always a little bit dangerous to do this sort of thing on cam because you just never know whether you're going to be able to unpeel it or not. 
So I'm just going to take a bit off there and cut it off. Now I am going to, well no, I'll do one and you can see the idea. Now this can be notoriously difficult to get double-sided tape off or the, the backing off double-sided tape. And um, if you've ever done any crafting, you'll probably use it quite a lot. So I'm going to use the scalpel, but the idea is not to tip the scalpel down, but to sort of keep it level because you want to come in just above the base layer and leave leave the sticky layer there and obviously that peels off that bit's obviously not stuck down properly which i'll just use with the scalpel to press okay now i'll go off cam to get the other four pieces off and i'll come back to you okay. like that now these pieces don't seem to have stuck down very well but that's not a problem now i'm going to use a piece of styrene you might remember that as the jig i made for the brackets on for the lift so i'm now going to place that on top of there and put the window over the top trying to get it level I'm after a bigger gap at the bottom than I am at the top and press obviously the, the jig is helping me to lift it off the base so it doesn't stick again trying to get it level And yeah, about there. So I'm just going to press that on now and turn it over and give it a bit of a press. So the first thing to go in is the windowsill. Now I've got a piece of card here, which I have toned down to the right colour. I'm going to put a bit on the end of the scalpel, to be honest, and just... Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Doesn't have to be a lot, just sufficient to get the windowsill to stick. And I'm just going to pick that up with the end of the scalpel. And, oops. Incidentally, if you get any glue on the glazing, wash it off with a tiny amount of water straight away because it won't come off quite so easily if you don't. I'm not gonna put all of these in, but just give you a flavor. So a tiny bit of glue on there like that. And then with the tweezers, and then I'm just going to place in there like that. And then with the scalpel, get it in and straight like that now some people might say well one millimeter square is far too big for engage and ordinarily i'd agree with you but you see it's like i've said in the past i think if everything is purely perfectly to scale some things just don't look right um it's hard to explain it but some things do look better if they are a tad over scale. Like, for example, if I show you that windowsill, chances are you wouldn't see it if it was smaller than that. And I am going to leave it white as well, just to make a point. But you're getting the idea. It just, it's really quite easy just to pop them in and um, glue them down. So, it, you know, just, the other thing is I'm just going to put the top top and bottoms in first and then match up the two side pieces and uh, just a little bit of pva will do that right anyway i hope you found that helpful obviously the doors need to also go in as well um so i'll get those done i've put three doors in so there's two single doors um on this side and there's a set of double doors on the other side which will have a ramp going up to them but anyway right i'll move on and get all that finished and i'll show you when it's done so there's the two sides a little bit more complete. All the windows and window frames, window sills are all in now. Actually, I still need to darken down the edges on those, but I'll do that. Clearly this section here and all these verticals, they're nowhere close to being finished yet. And the same on the bottom. 
The two doors have got lintels above now. So we're getting closer. And as you've seen, there's the end gable, nothing on it at the moment. And these uh, internal supports, which I am going to put um, like on a rolled steel joist, you have, or some people call it I-beam. So I shall turn that into an I-beam. Um, so anyway, I'll set that up and you can have a quick look and that'll be the end of this video for now. So there we are at the moment. That's the start of it. Excuse the pencil sharpener and the roll of solder at the back. But that's the first section underway. Okay, now, as this video is about the 20 minutes already, I'm going to end the video there and um, I'll post this and I'll try and get the next update out at the weekend. So my next stage is to start making the bits that are going to go down this side now. So it'll be another two of this section to go down the far end and the middle bit, which I'm thinking is... If I lift one of these parts up, the middle bit will just go with which end is lifted up. I think that's the easiest way and I can have the option of lifting just the middle if I want to. All right. Anyway, I'll catch you soon and um, hope you have a good rest of the week. And uh, yeah, take care. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do like, subscribe and share not forgetting to click on that little bell to get regular notifications of any videos I upload. Some other videos are appearing on the screen right now which also might take your interest. Thanks once again and bye for now.